Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. I'm going to be, well, I'm, I am in my kitchen right now, but I'm going to be in here for a good chunk of the afternoon here. It is 10 after 1 on Sunday afternoon, and I just spent the last probably the last hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer, organizing my freezers. So I actually have multiple freezers, like chest freezers, and they were just, they were just disorganized. We hunt and fish, and so we have a lot of different wild game um, options in our freezers, and I just needed to get everything really, really organized. So let me just give you a quick peek. <laughs> so whenever I organize the freezers it reminds me that I have a lot of like fruits and vegetables especially hey Joe in the background how are you good good so I have a lot of fruits and vegetables like garden produce and things like that that I freeze and okay we don't need to see a muscle here today and it reminds me that I have to use that stuff up sometimes you know you just kind of forget so this freezer I organized to be all of my fruits and vegetables I have corn and rhubarb and I have some potato products from the store. I, I found one last bag of the french fries that I made and I have a lot of cranberries. So because of doing this project I came up with a lot of ideas of things that I'd like to do in the kitchen today. So before we get started on all kinds of kitchen things I wanted to show you I opened up one of my jars of cranberry juice and it's been probably about a month. It's very drinkable which Cranberry juice without sugar and just straight cranberry juice is not usually super drinkable without like, <laughs> without really puckering up. Warren is working outside. Unless he's knocking for us. Okay, that was actually Warren knocking for us on the window. He is working on an outside project he, he, and he needed me to check on something. So anyway, I'm back and I strained the cranberries I strained the juice off of the cranberries, and yes, it is very weak, very drinkable though, so it's really healthy for, um, I mean, it's really healthy for us. It's just the water with the cranberry uh, juice infused, so I would almost call this more of a cranberry infused water because it, like I said, it's very drinkable. I did then try a glass with a little bit of sugar just to see, oh. you know, how like salt will bring out the flavor and things. Sugar will, will um, also sort of enhance the flavor of like fruit and stuff like that. So it tastes more like what you think the fruit should uh, taste like. Anyway, I put just a little bit of sugar in and that's fine too. It's not super. So I think the last time I did this, I must have used two cups of wow. cranberries instead of just one cup. Oh, so I'm going to make some sweet. more of this and I'm going to do two cups and then I also sweet. have an idea. Sweet. <laughs> I also have an idea to do uh, cranberry blueberry juice. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do this method or if I'm going to do the steamer juicer method. We'll see. None of it's going to happen today though. So the very first thing I'm going to get started with is making barbecue and sometimes I guess other areas call it sloppy joes. So I have a friend and she grew up what we would call out east or back east and she I think Connecticut or maybe Vermont they always called when you had like a cookout or a grill out no matter what you were having they always called it we're having a barbecue. So at church, when the kids would have a retreat for like before making their first communion, we would always have barbecue chips and pickles. And the first time that like that type of thing happened, she was like, oh, wow, it seems like it's kind of cold out to have a barbecue. Well, then she found out that actually that's what we call like what they would call sloppy joes. <laughs> we call barbecue and what we call a cookout, they call a barbecue. So anyway, it's just interesting how different parts of the country have like their own lingo, right? So I am making barbecue, although in the Pioneer Woman cookbook, it's called uh, sloppy joes. And I always follow her recipe. I can link to the cookbook. Um, I, she probably has the recipe online too. I'll check that out and link to that. I decided I better put on an apron. This is a new dress. I got it at Walmart, but and it wasn't very much. I want to say it was like 15 or $16, but still, I don't want to splatter anything on it. So I'm just getting my burner turned on low. My meat is like just thawing on one side, but froze on the other. So it's going to take a little bit to get this meat browned. Outside and baseball. Okay. If you're going to play baseball, you need to put on pants because it's very cold. It's only, it's 22 degrees, Joe. Wait a minute. It's very cold. 
And it's so nice our chickens are laying eggs again. There you go. Sloppy Joes. Hey. Salt. Uh-huh. Tablespoon of salt. So as the meat is cooking over there, I'm going to get my bread pan filled with the ingredients to make some hamburger buns. Now this recipe is not just, um, I have like two recipes that I like to use when I do make hamburger buns. Not that often I do it, but I want to do it today. And I'm going to use my herbed sandwich bun recipe. So that is a quarter cup of water and a quarter cup of milk, one egg. I have two thirds cup of cottage cheese one fourth cup of Parmesan cheese, three tablespoons of sugar, a half tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna do three cups of bread flour. Make sure you fluff it. Three tea, or sorry, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I'm gonna do a half teaspoon of minced garlic. I have a quarter teaspoon of basil, an eighth teaspoon of onion powder. I'm going to get this into my bread or going in the bread machine and then I'm going to saute just a little bit of onion. Uh, how much onion? I'm going to do about a quarter cup of diced onion. I'm going to saute that in my small cast iron pan and then I will add that to the bread machine once I have that done. So I have to be quick because I want to make sure that it's still in its mixing phase. All right, the onions are ready to go in. The meat is completely cooked here. My venison just had a little bit of meat juice, but not any fat to drain off. So I just leave that right in there for flavor. And since I have four pounds of ground venison here, I'm actually adjusting the recipe just a little bit. So I put in two large bell peppers and I had a mix of green and red just because that's what I had um, frozen from the garden last year and then I also put in a full large onion and now I'm going to get the garlic. Basically I just add in all of the ingredients up to the freshly ground black pepper as well as one cup of water. So if you just do and look at over here in the ingredients water is not listed but it is listed in the directions. So be sure to put in the water, which actually, now that I come, come to think of it, I'll be putting in two cups of water. So I'm gonna get all of those ingredients in here. I've made this recipe so many times and showed it on my channel so many times. I'm not gonna film me putting all these ingredients in, but uh, just know that I'm gonna put them all in except for, focus, focus, I will use a little bit less brown sugar. So instead of four, tablespoons, I'll do three tablespoons of brown sugar, and then I also do not use any Tabasco sauce. So I'm gonna get started on the blueberry muffins, actually blueberry cranberry muffins. I asked Warren before, I said, if I do something blueberry cranberry, should I make muffins or make like a, a fruit crisp or something? And he said muffins, which I was surprised because usually I feel like there would be other things he'd like rather than muffins, but muffins it is, it's really easy for me. Since I'll be doubling this recipe, I do need four eggs. Oh, that one cracked nice, but this one didn't. Come on. Open, open, open. That was a mess. I need two cups of milk. And I did not realize that I was this low on oil. I do have olive oil. Actually, I meant what I'm going to do is melt shortening it's gonna work i'm gonna put the dry ingredients in twice so i'm gonna start sifting them together i will be using my like homemade powdered sugar i didn't realize this either which is kind of a bummer but i'm actually out of um, regular sugar i just used the last little bit i mean I have about two tablespoons left. So I'm just gonna use my home powdered sugar. And I read online that in muffins and uh, muffins and something else, quick breads, it's one and three fourths cup of powdered sugar to every one cup of granulated sugar. So I'm gonna give that a try. I hope it works well. I guess that's all I can say. I hope it works well. When I made my powdered sugar, I did not add cornstarch to it, and so it did get clumpy, 
but I find that just running it through the sifter actually works just fine. And any little chunks that just don't want to go through, I can just kind of press them. Then I need eight teaspoons of baking powder. All right, now we're just gonna get this stirred. This is gonna be a lumpy batter and that is quite all right. And then usually when there's just a little bit of flour left, that's when I put the fruit in because I really don't wanna over mix the batter. The frozen berries have made my dough really, really stiff. That's okay though, but it might take them a little bit longer to bake just because the dough is gonna be so incredibly cold. Food is just like cooking right now. There isn't anything particular that I can do. We're actually having some drain issues right now, so I can't wash the dishes. Um, Warren is working on that. So if you hear any like, oh, any noises like that, it's probably him working on the drain. So anyway, I just thought I would look at my March meal plan. We are at the end of March here now, and I just, the month was just very different. Uh, we ended up having the soup suppers at church on Wednesday night, and so we didn't eat these Wednesday meals. Uh, I ended up making chili, which I don't even know if that's on the list here, because I made chili soup for one of the Wednesday su soup suppers, and we brought um, some home, so we ended up having that for a couple nights at home. Anyway... We're going to do the barbecue tonight. I don't know if we're going to do french fries with it. I do have corn. Uh, I think we will. I have, I still, I found a bag of frozen french fries that I made down in the basement. So I think we'll make those up tonight and that will be that meal. We never did make the venison pot pie. We did that, except I did not make the cream of broccoli soup that night. Uh, we did do a breakfast for supper. We had the gyros. We did not do the crispy chicken. We had the at-home fish fry. We did go out to eat. We had a church fish fry that we, Emily and Sparky, picked up one night. And I feel like we did something else the other one. The hamburger casserole, no. Beef biscuit roll, no, no, no. None of the Wednesday meals. Tostada pizza, no. Tacos, yes. Barbecue venison, venison peppers, and meatloaf chicken. We didn't have any of those meals. Sometimes I get to the end of the month and I think, what did we even eat? Because the meals that I have planned, they're like still there waiting to be made. So anyway, I think sometimes it's just whatever happens, we get busy one night and we end up making a different meal than I planned or I end up making like double of something and we just end up having leftovers for the next night. And then, yeah, just things just seem to come up sometimes and you just don't end up making your meals. That's fine. And I know I just recently had someone ask me a question about meal planning for the whole month and they said oh I don't think I'll ever be that organized it really isn't just about organization I like to have all those meals planned so I know that I have the ingredients on hand so I can make those meals anytime I want now some of them require some fresh ingredients you know that we probably used up in other just in other ways you know I hadn't planned on making potato salad this month while well, I made potato salad so um, you know I just used up ingredients differently than I had planned so anyway if you are trying to get onto the meal planning business and a whole month sounds like that is way too much to plan for it's a lot for me to plan for too but I like I said I just like having the variety of meals and then anything we don't eat 
or a meal I don't make, I just transfer that to the next month. I don't overthink it. I don't uh, try to come up with a whole new meal plan. I figure I already have most likely the meat and maybe even like the canned goods, if there's canned goods that go into that. I have most of those things already. I just have to pick up a few extras to make that meal happen the next month. And that's what I do. So the monthly meal planning, doesn't mean that you have to stick to it exactly. It's just nice to know that you have those ingredients on hand. Okay, I think I need to stir the barbecue. Oh, that is getting nice and thick, just the way I like it. Her recipe, so the Pioneer Woman's recipe says to cover it and simmer for 20 minutes. I find that it needs to simmer longer than 20 minutes. Usually the first 20 minutes I will simmer it covered and then I will just crack the lid so it can kind of, you know, the, the steam can, so some of the moisture can steam away. And then I continue it on low for quite a while, usually until we're gonna eat it. Just because I like to have that simmering, I just feel like the flavors go through it a lot, um, a lot better. And even better than serving it tonight would be if I put this in the fridge, like turned it off, let it cool, enough to get it into the refrigerator and then brought it back out tomorrow and warmed it up. I think that the flavor is even better the next day, but we won't be doing that because we are all hungry and we are going to want barbecue for supper tonight. So I have 16 minutes left on the uh, herbed hamburger buns that I'm making and then I might make the other recipe, my other favorite hamburger bun recipe as well. Um, we'll have to see, let's see. It does take a quarter cup of sugar, I could substitute in powdered sugar if I would like to make this. Otherwise I have all the ingredients. So I might do that so that we have the buns for today, you know, for eating tonight. And then I have more buns for tomorrow because there'll be plenty of barbecue. I might even, I might even have so much that I end up freezing some of it. We'll just have to see. Hot. So that's the first uh, 24 muffins and I have a lot more batter so I think even though it was a double batch I think it's going to make more than 48. Here's the dough. This is the herbed hamburger bun dough. It's absolutely beautiful. It's such a nice soft pliable dough. I'm just going to divide this into 10 equal sections. Let's see here. We kind of want it to be as even as possible. I can already see they're not very even. And then I'm just going to work and form this. Into a nice roll, just like that. And actually, you know, it, it's nice when they're real even, but if they're not, that's okay too. Because I don't know if you ever noticed, but sometimes kids don't want, you know, a huge hamburger bun. So it kind of ends up all working out. Although if there is one that's really big, then I just add a little dough to another smaller one. And I like to just kind of keep stretching the tops so the tops get nice and smooth. And I kind of fold it all underneath to the bottom like that and place it on here. Go! So I'm going to cover these and put these on a warm in a warm spot in my dining room. So what I like to do is just find one of those sunny spots, put a chair over there and I will set the rolls to rise for 30 minutes. This is the next recipe that I'm going to get going in my bread pan. The hamburger buns have risen for 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to put these in for about 12 minutes. I have the oven set to 375. It just has to preheat for another minute or so. And here's 12 minutes. So I'm just going to let these cool. They're really 
Yep, the bottoms. Wherever there's a little onion, it they do sometimes get like a little dark spot there. But um, yeah, that was 375 degrees. I do think that if you like a lighter um, bun, you could use a lighter pan as well. If you or if you're going to use a dark pan, turn it down another or turn it down 25 degrees so 350 instead of 375 but we'll just let these cool because you know if you try to cut into them right now they'll sometimes they just get a little like gummy if you try to slice into them right when they're super super hot so anyway that's how they look they look delicious they smell delicious I have 41 minutes left on, oh, look at the fingerprints there. I have 41 minutes left here on this batch of hamburger buns. So last week, I think that you all saw that we'd gone to the library and Peter picked up some cooking books and, or cookbooks, kids cooking books. Anyway, he's finally getting to doing the sweet potato fries. Now, very careful with that knife. Oh, I see, you're gonna cut that little end off, yep. So he's just following the directions in here. It's a little bit different than how I use I usually make them. This recipe actually calls for what is it called for, Peter? Again, what did this recipe call for? Uh, cornmeal. Yes, it calls for some cornmeal to be sprinkled on them. So I think that must add a little another level of crispiness. So this should be interesting, huh? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And salt. Um. And salt. All right, Peter has everything all set to go with his sweet potato fries. He's just going to spray a dark pan. I like to use a dark pan with something like this just so that they kind of crisp up a little bit better. And then pour those on and just spread them out so they're like a single single uh, layer, right? Nice. Those look beautiful. They look so tasty. I've never done it like this before where you soak them, to get off some of the starch, and then... That's a big one. That is a big one. That's one that you cook. All right, that looks great. But then the seasoning the actually makes the aftertaste. Uh -huh. Is the oven preheated yet? Nope. The dough for the second batch of hamburger buns is done. I'm just going to get this rolled out. And this one is actually supposed to be divided into 18 equal pieces. So lots of buns. Just one in. Number 12. I'm making these a little bit... Whoa! <laughs> There's a NASCAR Whoa. race in the background. I'm making these a little bit flatter. Uh, so that they come out a little bit more hamburger bun like the first pan the other the other uh, recipe They're a little bit um, A little taller not gonna be a big deal still still smell delicious, but I just thought I'd make these a little flatter So these have to rise for about an hour I'm gonna do the same thing just cover them with a dishcloth set them in the sun on a chair and set my timer for one hour We'll come back see how they look. Well Peter's sweet potato fries are looking scrumptious. They're totally done now. They're totally done. Yeah, they look done. They look perfect. You're gonna try one? Peter said he doesn't even like sweet potato fries. I bet that backcountry sauce that I made, that would be really good on these. What do you think? You don't like them? They're delicious. But I love sweet potato fries, so... 